What's going on everybody? Welcome back to a video camera review. That might be a little bit too much suspense for a review, but I kind of like it. Anyway, let's get on to the unboxing. This is the full HD high definition camera. Anyway, let's pop open this box to see what we're actually getting with this. Now before I just get into it, I want to say that the price of this thing is actually cheaper than most of these other cameras at the same price point. And the cameras at the exact same price point are pretty much the exact same camera, so why wouldn't you just go with the cheaper one? Now I have already opened the box, so that's why there's not going to be any packaging, but first we are greeted with a mic which you can clip onto the top of your camera, a mini USB cable, a wall jack with a USB 2.0, a sun blocker type thing that you attach to the front of your camera to reduce glare. A cable that you can connect your TV to and it can output to a TV like I literally just said. And interestingly, it comes with a remote. Now this is actually pretty cool and I'll get into that later. It also comes with a battery. Actually, it comes with two batteries. The other battery is attached to the camera, which is located in this nice little carrying case thing. But the problem with I have with this already is the fact that you can only put the camera in and that's it. Nothing of the other accessories can fit in there because it's so small. Anyway, here is the camera. Now it is pretty small. I don't know really what I was expecting. It's not a DSLR and uh, it's actually a pretty nice size. It's definitely easy to handle and not too heavy whatsoever. And it also has the extra battery on the back, but it does not come with an extra SD card. So you have to supply that yourself. It also has a kind of a wrist strap or hand strap so you can uh, safely attach it to your hand and not feel like you're gonna drop it all the time. And so with that, before I get into the features, I just want to kind of attach everything to see all the attachments that we got. First, I'm gonna attach this shroud kind of sun blocker thing. I always forget what it's called and uh, it actually works pretty well. So you got like another ring, if I just remove the box here. You actually got another ring to kind of tighten it up against the camera so that it can uh, have the text at the top, kind of OCD, but you know how things are sometimes, you just want it to look right. Moving on to uh, some of the cables, we're not gonna plug those in obviously, but there is actually a pretty cool feature that you can use with the mini USB cable that you can plug it into your computer and use it as a webcam, which I will get into a little bit later. Anyway, here we got the mic. Now this is a pretty small mic and it's got some settings up on the top here actually. But anyway, to attach it, it's got like that slide up on the top of the camera here, like all DSLR and a lot of cameras have, so that's really easy. So all you have to do is kind of slot it and then tighten it. Now this product is advertised for anyone who wants a video camera or vloggers or anything like that. It's actually is pretty much advertised to anyone that could use a camera whatsoever. We're just gonna plug that into the mic port right there. So that's pretty much it. And then we also gotta remember to turn the mic on or you will get actually no audio whatsoever. So, so far, this is actually a pretty good thing that we got here. It looks pretty professional in my opinion. Actually, we can even flip that screen around so you can see yourself or see myself. That's kind of interesting. But anyway, that's pretty much it for all the accessories that we can add on. It comes with an extra battery and also the remote, which pretty much has the same controls on the camera. So you can just take a photo remotely so you can have sitting on a tripod, which is actually pretty insane. So anyway, let's get on to some of the camera features that are uh, featured on this camera, I guess. So yeah, let's get to them. All right, so taking a closer look at the camera now, some of the main features that this camera actually has is the fact that it has 24 megapixels. So the photos that you take will actually be pretty high resolution. Anyway, for the full HD, it shoots 1920 by 1080 at 30 FPS and 30 FPS the whole way down. Doesn't get much higher than that. Also for the video, it is stabilized with some internal stabilization of some kind and it also has 16 times digital zoom, but I probably wouldn't recommend that because digital zoom uh, is not good whatsoever. The only zoom that is good is if you have like a zoom lens or something like that which this camera does not have. But anyway, if we just pop it open here, it's always gonna greet us with a welcome. So here, it got some information up on the display. It's actually pretty, pretty light on there. Um, we got a lot of information. Now, I've changed most of these settings to the highest quality, actually sharpness set to normal because things can look a little bit too sharp and looks kind of weird. Now, the screen quality does not justify what is actually being recorded here. This is only a three inch screen, 16 by nine aspect ratio. And I bet if you would take the files off of the camera and view them on a computer, they would look way better. Now, one of the features that I saw about this camera that I was very interested in is the fact that there is a mini USB port and that you could plug your computer into it and use it as a webcam. And this actually does work and it's pretty easy to do. All you do is select the setting in your camera of what you wanna to set to. Actually, I could probably demonstrate right now. So if I just take this and plug it into the camera here, I have it plugged into the other end into a computer. It'll probably pop up with some settings like that and you can do 
MSDC, which I think just reads the files off the camera or PC camera. If you choose PC camera, it will show up as a USB cam. So an OBS or something, you can use it as a webcam, set it up. So you can have it in the corner of your gaming or whatever you want to do. And it actually works pretty well. All right, also with the mini USB port, you can also charge it while you're recording. So you can really record for a very long time. Also for the mic here, I forgot to mention that the mic has a battery built in. You have to charge it with the mini USB. I don't know why they choose mini. I like micro so much better, but it's whatever. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. It's got some switches up top for adjusting. You always gotta remember to turn the mic on. If you don't, then it's probably gonna record off the camera audio and that's probably not gonna sound as good as a dedicated microphone. Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, Zach, that's nice and great, but all I really care about is quality and the sound. Now, this next part of the video is for you. So uh, sit back and listen uh, closely. I guess if you wanna look at the quality, I'm gonna be comparing the Nikon D5600, which isn't really a comparison uh, to go against such a video camera, but like you'll get an essence for what the quality is. Yo, it's the editor, and I was going to show the footage next, but it just looks. Uh, here, look at the Nikon first, and then here is the video camera. There's so much noise in the shot, even though I thought I had adequate lighting, I guess I was wrong, and the sound is so bad. The mic picks up all the background noise. Just listen. I know this mic is working, so if that one's not... So then I tried taking the camera outside where there was plenty of light, and here are the shots that I got. And just like before, the noise is incredible, and literally the focus area is so small that it's hard to see if anything is in focus at all. Like, I thought I was focusing on the graphics card here, but it was actually focusing on the tree, and there's no manual focus. So it's kind of difficult. And also the audio would need some serious editing to remove all the background noise. Now interestingly, this camera actually reminds me of the early 2000s where technology like this was new to the average consumer. Now this is 2020 and this kind of quality should not exist. An older iPhone can not only be found cheaper, but it also has insanely way better quality. So then what is the use case for this camera? I noticed on Amazon that under one of the reviews that someone had left that they bought it for their child to use kind of as a, like a toy. And I thought that was actually really cool. If I had one when I was really young, I would have totally loved that. But I'm not 10 anymore and I don't really have a use case for it because of its poor quality. Unless I would use it as a webcam or something like that. I don't recommend this if you're interested in quality, but if you're not, then be my guest and purchase one for yourself. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to purchase it for yourself, there will be a link down in the description. Also in the description, I will have a Lustre link. Now Lustre is a Chrome extension to find you great deals and help you shop more quicker. So if you're interested in that, please use my link in the description to get started. Anyway, that's pretty much it. And with that being said, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.